So let's go ahead and take a look at, like I said, a little bit of everything. Let me make sure I have everything turned on. So we got a couple other things over here. Make sure we're not missing anything. Maybe a few different eye tests. I think these were the original. And then it looks like you do have just some poly paint for the eyes. We won't talk about poly paint today. I think we'll just focus more on form. So first, what I would say is this concept feels a little, a little meh to me uh, from the three quarter. The, the shape of the face feels a little stiff. I think this is really nice though. I think that's very nice. Uh, if we're looking at just this one, I think we can use the three quarter a little bit. Well, let's just talk about some, some differences here. I think your eyes might be a little too small based on what I'm seeing here compared to this image. I would say that the shape of your eyes is also not correct. Let's go into transpose master very quickly. And I will break some stuff in your face as we love to do. So one thing that's also feeling very off with your eyes is they're feeling uh, a little bug eye -y, bug eye-ish to me. Bug eye-y, bug eye -y. sure. Uh, so let's try to correct some things here in your eyes. The first thing being pulling down on these corners a bit more. Kind of see this shape here. And this geometry might not want to be my friend, but that's okay. We'll try to make this work. And I would try to define these corners of the eyes to be a little bit sharper. Your transitions are a little too round right now. Let me just look at your face. So I would come in here just because looking at this, I can't really tell where the outer eye corner is. I can tell where this one is because I started to kind of pull it down a little bit. But I would try to focus on tightening these up, getting these tighter corners like what we see there. You could use some combination of masking with like a mask lasso maybe and try to pinch those up a little bit. You could actually use the pinch brush. There's a lot of different ways to go about doing that. So that would be something that I would also take a look at. This general eye shape here, again, I think they're a little larger than what I'm seeing here, but I think just the face shape is suffering. So let's kind of take a step back and look at some of the underlying form here for your face and see if we can correct some of that and that might get the eyes to start feeling better. So the way all the shapes in your face work with your eyes, your nose, your mouth, your ears, the way all this stuff starts to work together, it affects the rest of your face and gets all this stuff kind of working and flowing together, especially around here in the cheek. Very quickly, I'm gonna go back to your T-pose mesh and just make some really big general changes very quickly of things that are just sticking out to me in your face because it'll be much easier to do it here than it will be all separate. Very quickly. Come on, go away. So, shape of the face. Let's pull back on your eye cavity a little bit. Let's, we're gonna need a lot more volume here in your cheeks. Getting kind of an awkward hit under the cheek. We'll probably have to fix that. Let's see what else. Mouth feels more than a little awkward. I think it's more so the volume around here. Jawline needs to be defined quite a bit more. Corners of the lips need to come back quite a bit. I'm just gonna break some stuff here. All right, let's go back here to T-pose. In terms of just like location matching, I think you're you know, fairly close. I think you've overlaid some of this. I'm not really sure. Distance of the forehead isn't right. Your forehead's too short or your hair is too far forward. It's probably a combination of those two things. I would take another look at that. I'm gonna try getting some of this volume back in your cheek area, fixing your jaw. Location of your ear is just wrong. Um, your ear sits behind your jaw. This is a common thing that I've actually been seeing quite a lot. I'm not sure why that is, but 
Uh, your ear sits behind your jaw, so your jawline, you know, that bone rides up. You can feel it with your finger. Your ear sits behind that. And uh, look at a skull. I would recommend looking at a skull. You can see a hole, your auditory meatus or ear canal. That is right where your your ear hole goes. So try to get that in the right place. Let's try to fix some of the volume here. Really try to round this out. Right around here, this is just like way too much volume. It feels very awkward. I would be rotating around your model, looking at these really extreme views as much as you can. And one thing that I find helpful when I'm in those earlier stages, since we were kind of already talking about, you know, tightening up the corners of the eyes, there's one there. But as we start to pull this line down, I tend to, here, I'm gonna squish this in quite a bit. I tend to really focus on getting a good plane of the face from the eye corner down to the top lip, okay? So I would definitely take a step back to look at that. Your lips feel very awkward right now. We'll get to those in a moment. Just kind of continue with this plane fix here. Nose feels a little unappealing. Let's just try to very quickly do Let's see what we what we got here. The the planes of this just aren't very distinct. So remember when you're in those early stages, try to define your planes a bit better. And then from there, because it is a female face, we obviously want these transitions to be a lot softer, a lot more gentle. So I would recommend that if you do end up defining some planes a bit harder, then you go back through with a smooth pass and this is already starting to feel quite a bit better. We'll define that up between your septum. I believe that's what you call it, what that's called, the middle bridge of your nose, right? And your lip, never get that rounded edge there. By default, ZBrush likes to get these really kind of curvy, smooth transitions. Try to stay away from those in a lot of places because especially like right here, that's just not how the nose works. Make sure you're looking at some other references as well, especially if you're not super experienced in sculpting faces. Uh, the shape here for, uh, I, don't, I don't know what this divot is called, but this is just way too exaggerated. I would fill this in quite a bit. Flatten that out. It's just not super apparent in this face. There's maybe like a couple lines representing that. This is, um, this is a problem of representation. In, in sculpture, and it's something that you see in a lot of, you know, early stuff. You know that this shape is supposed to be there, so you typically just put it in without thinking about what it actually looks like. Uh, this was an example that we looked at an example of this in a previous critique where the lines of the sternocleidomastoid uh, or mastenoid muscles coming down the neck, on the sides of the neck, uh, we're just kind of a straight line kind of like carved in and pulling in to like that point there, which is just incorrect. Uh, we can see like a little bit of that line of that muscle that I just mentioned right there. Speaking of the neck, you know, it's probably curving in too much, so we'd want to straighten some of that out. Uh, the angle here feels very pushed forward, whereas this feels much uh, taller. So I would take a look at the angle at which that neck is. I'm not going to take the time to just push it back, but I would take a second pass there. The jaw or chin, all this is kind of a, quite a bit more pointed as it comes down. Just looking at the silhouette there, so focus on that a bit more. I actually have a video coming out over on my YouTube channel, I believe tomorrow, or the tomorrow or the day after talking about um, recognizing hits in your silhouette and kind of just understanding two-dimensional and three-dimensional form and how to represent this stuff. Because it is very hard, right? It's, it's not easy. I, I, I've i never met anybody that was like, oh yeah, that's, that's so easy. That's the easiest thing in the world. <laughs> it's not easy. Um, yeah, there's just a bunch of stuff here that's wrong with the planes of your face from a very kind of basic level. And I really think looking at some kind of planar head or just looking at some 
real faces could really help you in that direction. A lot of what I've been doing here is just kind of general quick corrections. Remember that I think one of, one of your kind of biggest flaws here is that as you have a primary form that you start to put something on top of, and I've kind of already corrected your nose a little bit here, but let's use your lips as an example. Um, we want the underlying shape to still hold really well. And we also want um, your, your lower lip is like thrusted forward here really far. I want to say that before I forget, but now I've lost, I've lost track of my, my mind's running way too fast for my mouth to keep up. Um, so as you make a primary form and put a secondary form on top of that, you don't want it to break your initial shape uh, is essentially what I'm trying to say. So like the nose on top, you don't want that to destroy the plane of your face. That was very true in our last sculpt that we looked at as well. So for instance, these secondary forms also all interact with each other in the face. So let me mask off your lower lip, which you have a polygroup for me. Beautiful, thank you so much. And let's just move this lower lip back. And it's a lot more than just this, right? There's a lot more going on here than just that. This is way too stuck on here for the chin. We really want this to feel integrated through here. And right now, that just isn't the case. And the shape of this lower lip in general just isn't correct. We want the surface to turn here at quite a different angle. So let me just come through here and pinch some of this. I'm not gonna have enough time, I don't think, to correct every single little thing here. And there, there is quite a bit here that I think you would want to correct as you move forward. I do think you're going in a good direction here. You got all the basic parts and pieces in and that's when it's time to start really focusing in and getting as close to that concept as possible. And again, I, I, I think you should grab some reference of some real human faces or possibly some like planar heads, something like that, so that you can just get the most basic shapes here correct, because that really is the most important part of this entire process. I'm just trying to correct the shape of the lips here as quick as I can. I'm gonna take more time than I think I wanna spend on it though. So just make sure that you're getting the two volumes of the lips correct. The volume of the upper lip is just way too exaggerated for really any lip, it's especially not true for what we're seeing in our concept. So let's just kind of simplify this. This is another example of, you know, we think the upper lip has this Cupid's bow shape and in general it does, but that doesn't mean that lips always have like this super strong bend right down the uh, middle portion or this super strong divot right here. I definitely don't have that. And I don't, many, I don't know many people that do. Uh, and especially looking at this, you know, it's quite a bit more squared off there at the top. So I think that starts to feel uh, quite a bit closer to what we're seeing over in the concept. I also just want to make sure that we have enough volume in our lips. Ooh, we got some messy stuff going on there. I would just play around with a lot, a lot of different stuff here. I would also kind of move, just kind of general shape of the head stuff here. Your, your head is just very undefined, very kind of round. Um, I would really, really, again, encourage that planar head just to like go back and really figure out the major shapes here that you want to attain. Something that might be helpful for you, I have a base mesh available on my gumroad of a face here. Thank you CG Buck for the follow there, appreciate that. I'll look at chat in just a moment here guys. Let me just say these last few things. I have a base mesh uh, head, female head that you can check out that's available on my Gumroad. It's not really a planar head per se. I think you can find some references for that. Uh, but if you wanna check this out, it's on uh, gumroad.com slash polygon just to show you where it is very quickly. 
somewhere. Uh, the stylized character base mesh. Uh, so something like this might help you figure out just where some of those major plane changes are, just being able to look at something in 3D. Uh, because right now, again, your head just feels very spherical, rounded, undefined. There's quite a bit here that we would want to correct. But I think that's going to be enough to kind of push you in the right direction. Hopefully you found this helpful in terms of the face. Uh, you also mentioned the hair, which I will very quickly talk about. Uh, your hair, like the distance between your forehead and hair, is not accurate. Oh man, it's just there's things I keep seeing in the face. I'm like, oh, I want to want to sculpt more, fix more stuff. <laughs> Let me talk about the hair, and then maybe we can look back at the face. So this distance. Not correct. I think your forehead starts to wrap and round, wrap a round too quickly. So I think fixing the shape of your head will help to get that distance feel a little bit better. I kind of quickly pulled that out, so that wasn't a very good job of me. You got like a nice bulge going on there, so probably want to fix that. Um, but yeah, what can I say about the hair? I think in terms of accuracy, you're not really fitting. No, please don't crash. I think in terms of accuracy, you're not really hitting the shapes that we're seeing in either of these concepts. In terms of just like the general shape. So I would take a step back and maybe try to hit some of that. Thank you, Spiked Graph, for the follow. And also for the back of the hair. Just really pay attention to your silhouette. I think... I think you're close with this piece, but I think you could be... I think you could be closer. And then in terms of, like, texture and shape, I think a lot of the stuff here that you've done is very nice. I think the only comment that I really have is about edge quality here, which I've already mentioned previously, but for some of this, some of these like larger shapes, you might want to think about how they transition and blend a little bit better. For a stroke, for something like this, we typically don't want to have it be the exact same all the way through the entire length of the um, form, whatever that may be. So I would recommend uh, maybe like fading out some of this towards one direction. Uh, an example of this, you have a little bit of it going on in some of your hair down here, just to exaggerate this very quickly. So you have this shape. Let's do, I actually can't see that. <laughs> Couldn't tell if that was a negative or a positive. So you got this shape running down, like, let's say for a strand of hair, and it carves and wraps around here like this. You can do this pretty quickly with a pinch brush like what I just did. But as this wraps down to the bottom of this, and I've kind of already done this with my stroke already a little bit, just out of habit, but you kind of want to fade some of this stuff out and like blend it into the original form. So this is what, <laughs> excuse me, this is what I'm talking about when I'm talking about edge quality. So as that starts to wrap around, just think about how that can, you know, fit into the rest of the shape so the stroke doesn't feel like it's exactly the same all the way through there. But I think that'll be it in terms of the hair that I will mention. I'll very quickly take a moment to look at chat and then we can maybe uh, talk about the face a little bit more if anybody has any questions. Uh, dude, please fix the tip of the nose. It has to go way up. Uh, yeah, her nose is quite a bit flatter. I don't think way up is what I would say, but a bit up. And then the bottom of the nose, probably want to make that a bit flatter in general. Typically try to make my female noses a bit smaller. So I think that's something that I enjoy doing, especially on this style of character. One, one area I'll also mention about the nose for the bridge of the nose, especially on female characters, I want to show you and this is gonna play into the brow and the rest of this shape. This, this part of your face up here just has this huge cliff-like angle to it that I think you should really um, reassess and try to flatten and straighten back out. 
right now it feels very um very kind of stretched and awkward your whole character feels like it had a stretch to it like that so like just by probably can't i can't get the neck and the head all at once but uh i would probably like run a mask through here and try to pull that part of your head back a little bit but for the uh kind of like transitioning of the ridge of the nose up into the brow kind of just like looking at how a lot of that form just doesn't exist there and a blending between the side of the face and this is obviously after we have fixed the major plane of our face so you don't want to really do this until you really go back through and fix this up I like to pull hard lines between my bridge of my nose up and around my brow and then I like to soften the form as it transitions up through there especially on female faces like I said, a lot smoother shapes. I tend to pinch a lot of this stuff and sharpen it up. But hopefully, a few of those things have been helpful for you. We can make a few more corrections to the shape of our nose. But other than that, I think that will be a good place for us to stop on this one. I think there's a lot more work that you can do here to the face than what I've done in just a short amount of time but I think that'll be kind of enough to get you, um, get you started, heading in the right direction. I wish you luck, and I cannot wait to see the next version of what you got. Uh, very helpful, of course, thank you. Definitely enough to go forward. Awesome, well, good luck to you. Again, I look forward to seeing the next step in the process.